Hello and welcome to another video. This is another optimization problem and we're saying what is the largest possible area of this triangle if the hypotenuse is 5. So you're free to change the height, you're free to change the base, but at every point you must always have a hypotenuse that's 5 centimeters long. What would be the largest possible area you can make? Okay. So let's make life easy for ourselves by taking the horizontal to be X and the vertical to be Y. And with that, you also want to remember that there's a relationship between X and Y. And then you want to know the formula for the area of a triangle. And once you have those ingredients ready, then we can make some good meal. <laughs> let's get into the video. So the first thing is we want to connect X and Y, okay? Because we need both of them and they will be changing because if you change the X, you have to change the Y because this has to stay constant. So um, the connection, Pythagorean relationship, is that X squared plus Y squared has to be five squared. So let's, um, because when you get the area of the triangle, you want to make sure that you're expressing the area in terms of only one variable, in terms of X or in terms of Y only. You can't have both of them, okay? Because that's when your differentiation will be smooth and fast. So what we want to do is write Y in terms of X so that we have our area formula in terms of X only. So what do you think Y will be? This implies that Y squared will be equal to 25 minus X squared, which means Y equals the square root of 25 minus X squared. Okay, 25 minus x squared. So here, let's write the formula for the area. Remember, area is half base times height, okay? And this implies that the area we're looking for will be one half of the base. The base is x, and the height is gonna be y, okay? But this y is what I'm gonna put here, but I'm gonna write it this way. I'm gonna write it as 25 minus x squared raised to power one half. I wrote it this way in the exponent form so it's easy to differentiate. So now we want to find the maximum area. What will x be for this to be maximum? So we, our intention is to maximize. So our plan, we want, we want to find maximum a. Okay, we want to find maximum a, which will be and that's what happens when you take the derivative, you equate it to zero, find the critical number, and that's it. Okay, so let's do that. What will dA dx be? Okay, if we differentiate A with respect to x, we'll have to apply the product rule because this is a, pro this is a product of two functions of x. So we follow the rules for product rule. You keep the first, one half of x. You keep the first, you differentiate the second. If I differentiate this, what I'm going to have will be, bring down the one half, it's going to be one half, put in parenthesis, 25 minus x squared, raised to power, subtract one from this negative one half, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. Okay, so all that is the first step of the product rule. The second part is add, we differentiate the first, that's going to be one half, and then we keep the second. The second is just um, this function. That's going to be 25 minus x squared raised to 1 half. Okay, so let's do the cleanup. This is where most people, so the, the, the calculus is done. This is where most people get stuck. It's the, in the cleanup. Um, I know that if I multiply this 1 half, oh, this 1 half will take out this 1. So there's going to be a negative eventually that comes out. Okay, so let's start canceling. So I'm going to cancel this 2 with this 2. And what I have, I'm going to have an x and then another x. And this half remains. So I'm going to have 1 half of x squared, definitely. And then I'm going to have this expression. That's all that's left. So it's going to be 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Okay, and if I go here, it's going to be plus. There's nothing, I'm just gonna have one half also 
of 25 minus x squared to the 1 half. Okay. Now, because I need to find the critical number or I need to solve for x, it is always easier for you to put the two together and write them because this is going to be a fraction, as you can see. So, um, I can transform this back to um, a fraction. If you bring this down because it has a negative exponent, you're going to have this become, there was a negative, where is it? Oh, I converted it to equal sign. No, okay, there's a negative here that came out. So we're going to have the negative of x squared here, okay? And under, I'm going to have 2 times the square root of 25 minus x squared. Okay, take a good look at this. This is what this means, okay? Plus, I'm going to have just this. It's going to be 25 minus x squared, the square root, divided by 2, okay? Now, if we put these two expressions together, this has 2, this has 2, definitely I'm going to have a 2 under, and this has square root of 25 minus x squared, 25 minus x squared, okay? And on top, what do I get? I get, um, so this and this is going to be exactly negative x squared. And this and this is going to be this. If you multiply this by this, you're going to get just this times this is going to remove the square root. And then you have just 25. So that's just 25 minus x squared. On top, I have negative 2x squared. And then I have plus 25. And under, I have, I have 2 times the square root of 25 minus x squared. So now I need to find the critical numbers. Remember that for a rational expression, when you have critical numbers, they are the values of x that make the expression zero, okay, or undefined. So if you look here, what will make this zero will be when you equate this to zero and when you equate this to zero. Well, when you equate this to zero, let's, let's take both of them. So what we have is, so let's investigate critical numbers. I think I'll have to do this here, but I'll write the answer eventually here. Critical numbers, okay, will be such that you have x being equal to... Um, I can see that if I solve this, I'm going to get x equals 5, which doesn't make any sense because x cannot be 5, okay? If x is 5, then it means y does not exist. As you can see, y will not exist and means there's no triangle. So I'm not going to be looking at the bottom. I can see it already because solving this gives you x equals 5 and you can use x equals 5 because it will make, if x is 5, then it's 5 squared plus y squared is 5 squared. It means y squared is 0, which means there is no y, which means there is no triangle. So it's a no-no. But if you solve the top, look at the top, what you're going to get is, let me do it here. What you're going to get is negative 2x squared plus 25 equals 0. That tells you that x squared has to be 25 over 2, which means x is the square root of 25 over 2. I'm going to leave it that way, not simplified, or I can simplify it. Well, this is going to be the same thing as... See, it's supposed to be plus or minus, but I will not take the minus part because I'm dealing with the sides of a triangle and there's no negative portion. You see how you eliminate possible answers quickly? Okay, so what you do now is say this is the square root of 5 over, sorry, it's 5 divided by the square root of 2. Now, do you want to rationalize? Because really that's not the point of this exercise. You don't need to rationalize because what we need is what will be the largest possible area. You're still going to use that number to calculate. So this is what we have. It's 5 over the square root of 2. So now I don't even need this critical number anymore because now I know x equals 5 over square root of 2, which is the only possible answer that I can have. So now I can say that a is maximum at x equals 5 over square root of 2. So that's it. That's all you need just because you were able to find the solution here. So now let's see what the maximum area. So don't stop. 
the maximum area is what we're looking for, the largest possible area. So what's the formula for area again? We said the area is going to be um, half base times height, which, which you can do this, but I don't want to do this. This looks too complicated. So I'm going to say, what is y? So at x equals y, which implies y will be what? What will y be when x equals this? We said y is 25 minus x squared equals 25 minus x squared. Oh, we already found x squared somewhere here. 25 over 2. So I'm not going to go back and rewrite. I'm just going to use this 25 over 2. 25 over 2. So what is 25 minus half of 25? Well, it's going to be 25 over 2 also. Simple reasoning. So now I have x to be this and I have y to be 25 over 2. No, 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 something. Square root, square root. I have to take the square root too. Come on, Newton. Come on. Let's go. So this is this, and this is equal to 5 over square root of 2. Okay? So this is what we have our answer. It looks like x and y are exactly the same thing. So um, that's it. y equals 5 over square root of 2. Okay? So what is the maximum area? Let's go back. So we know the maximum area, area max, will be equal to half of the base, which is x, times the height, which is y. Hey, come on, it's y. And this means that we have one half of, what is x again? 5 over square root of 2, square root of 2, times 5 over square root of 2. Okay. And that's going to give us 25 on top. And under, it's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4 square units. This is the maximum area you can obtain, okay, using this method. I hope you learned something. Give it a share. Give it a like. Give it a thumbs up. It's the same thing as a like, right? Okay. And leave a comment in the comment section. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have simply stopped living. Bye-bye.